Welcome to the Avatar series right here at Comic Storian, where we read comics dramatically back to you, giving you an audiobook drama. Today, we will begin the Avatar The Last Airbender comic book series, starting with The Promise. These comics are essentially season four of the TV show and explore what the gang were up to after defeating Fire Lord Ozai and returning peace to the world. And if you're wondering why you are hearing my voice, aka Dan T. Producer, well that is because I am the resident Avatar fanatic here in the office and Benny isn't as much of a fan. So luckily for me, he was kind enough to let me read this story to you guys. Let's jump on in. Water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and Katara and her brother Sokka discovered the new Avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills were great, he had a lot to learn before he could save anyone. But from the day they first met, Katara believed that Aang would save the world. With the help of his friends, Aang defeated Fire Lord Ozai and ended the Hundred Years' War. Following this, Zuko, Ozai's son, and Aang's ally became the new Fire Lord. Together with the Earth King Kue, Aang and Zuko promise to restore the Four Nations to harmony. Aang looks up at the map on the wall, pointing out the Fire Nation colonies. I never knew that the Fire Nation had built so many colonies in the Earth Kingdom, Aang notes. Looking at all the locations on the map, the Earth King stands close by. Yes, for the Earth people, they are a constant reminder of the war, like a scar. King Kue tells him. Kue turns and apologizes to Zuko, not meaning any offense, but Zuko waves off the comment. It is my duty to bring healing to the world. I'll remove those colonies. I'll do whatever it takes, he promises. Aang steps forward. He knows that moving the colonies won't be easy, and they should probably have someone oversee to make sure that everything goes peacefully. Someone like me, I'm the Avatar. Making stuff go peacefully is kind of my thing, he tells them. The Earth King is excited to have Aang helping with the relocation, and Katara and Sokka quickly agree to help. It'll be a movement, a movement towards harmony. We'll call it, the Earth King begins to say, but is quickly interrupted by Sokka. The Harmony Restoration Movement, he exclaims. What's with you and your goofy names for everything? Toph asks him. It's a gift, he tells her. The Earth King plans a large celebration to announce the movement. And that night, Aang and Katara decide what they truly mean to each other, embracing in a kiss. Ah! Sokka screams, interrupting them as he steps outside. Haven't you ever heard of knocking Sokka? Katara asks. But Sokka explains that you don't have to knock when you're walking outside. He also tells her she shouldn't kiss anyone in front of him, since it gives him the oogies. Oogies? Ah, you're so immature sometimes. What about you and Suki? She asks. The two begin to argue back and forth. Finally, Aang interrupts them, asking why Sokka came outside in the first place. Sokka nods, telling him that they are about to head out and want to take Appa for a ride before the Earth King's celebration. The group of friends have a great night riding Appa through the clean air. Nearby, the fireworks begin to explode and they all marvel at the pretty colors. Below them, they can hear the crowds cheering, hearing the news of the Harmony movement. Hey, want to know what fireworks are like for me? Close your eyes, Toffs tells Sokka, coming up behind him. BOOM! She screams laughing. Aang speaks with Zuko, trying to get his friend to smile. But Zuko turns incredibly serious. He tells Aang that he visited with his father the other day. I've been meaning to ask you a favor, Aang, Zuko tells his friend. If you ever see me turning into my father, I want you to... I want you to end me, he tells him. Aang is shocked. But Zuko explains that his family's legacy will always be with him. He knows he needs to heal what his father did, but the throne comes with a lot of pressure. If I'm honest with myself, I need a safety net. 
The world needs a safety net. That's what I need you to be, Aang. The safety net, Zuko tells him. Aang begins to argue, telling Zuko he's not like his father, but the young Fire Lord insists. Looking over at Katara, she gives Aang a nod. Fine, I promise, Aang tells his friend sadly. Fireworks continue to explode in the distance, illuminating Appa as he gently flies through the air. One year later, it is a clear night over the massive royal palace in the Fire Nation. Inside his bedroom, Zuko tosses and turns. Sweat pours down his forehead as he grits his teeth. Finally, he sits up gasping. Who's there? He yells, bringing the guards into the room. They tell him that he is in the most secure room in the entire palace, and that no one is trying to kill him. But suddenly, both guards are knocked unconscious. Zuko turns, blasting Fireball into the darkness, demanding to know who is there. From the shadows, a young woman descends, twirling a chain whip as she leaps. Down with the traitor! Down with the Fire Lord who betrays his own people, she yells. Zuko avoids her chain, blasting another fireball at her that she quickly dodges. The chain wraps around his foot, pulling him to the ground. Pausing only briefly, Zuko launches into a combo, tripping the woman up and knocking her to the ground. He reaches out, pulling the mask from her and revealing her face. Convince me not to take your life, he orders her, preparing for another strike. Go ahead. My family has been loyal to yours for generations. By getting rid of me, you would simply complete your betrayal, she tells him, anger in her eyes. Zuko is shocked when the girl tells him that her father is the mayor of Yudao, first of the Fire Nation colonies. The next day, the mayor is carried through the streets of Yudao. He orders his servants to stop stepping from his carriage to find his daughter's hands tied and escorted by Fire Nation soldiers. When her father questions her, she informs him that she went and saw someone about their problem. Him, she indicates over her shoulder as Zuko walks towards them. You must be Mayor Morishita. Your daughter snuck into my home and tried to kill me, Zuko informs the mayor, who is shocked by the news. The mayor falls to his knees, bowing before his ruler and begging Zuko to show mercy. I should have this whole city burned down, Zuko threatens, but the young girl steps forward, still angry. Why bother? The Harmony Restoration Movement will accomplish the same thing without you having to lift a finger, she snaps at him. Why can't you colonials get it through your thick skulls? The Restoration Movement is a means to peace, he tells them. The mayor suddenly stands, his own words growing angry. Peace? Peace for who? With all due respect, your majesty, my family has lived on this land for generations. This city was built on our own blood and sweat. We have just as much right to be here as anyone else, the mayor tells him. He stands telling Zuko that they are citizens of the Fire Nation and that his father would never let the Earth King and Avatar bully him into doing something so bad for his people. Memories flash of Zuko visiting his father in prison, of demanding to know what happened to his mother. But the former Fire Lord merely smiled, telling his son to bring tea next time so they could chat. I'll give you advice on how to be a good Fire Lord. Wouldn't that be nice? Zuko turns away from his father, walking out of the room. Do you think being Fire Lord is easy? The throne comes with pressures, and those pressures will change you. But if you can stand the heat, you'll become something more. The Fire Lord tells his son, You'll be back, and I'll be here, waiting, son. He tells Zuko, as the door shuts behind his son. Anger fills Zuko as he slams the mayor into the wall, his fist a burning ball of flames. I am not my father! Zuko shouts. No, young man, you're not. Fire Lord Ozai had many faults, but he was never a coward, never a traitor, the mayor tells him. Off the coast of the Fire Nation, a group of colonists ride aboard the Fire Nation ship, bringing them back to the nation of their people. Overhead, Aang carries others on the back of Appa. He turns back to one of the colony mares, smiling at her. Don't worry, Mayor Nishi. My team and I have helped dozens of Fire Nation colonies move back to their homeland already. They've all loved coming back, he tells her. But the mayor is not convinced, telling Aang that those colonies were young, 
Their people had no roots in the Earth Kingdom. But Aang explains that the Fire Nation is different under Zuko's rule, that he is trying to re-establish classic traditions amongst his people, demonstrating by showing her a Fire Nation dance. When the ship docks, they begin to offload the people and supplies, but they are told to stop by a group of soldiers. You are colonials? Return to the Earth Kingdom by order of Fire Lord Zuko. Fire Lord Zuko has officially withdrawn his support from the Harmony Restoration Movement. Everyone just stares in shock at this declaration. Later, at the Beifong Metal Bending Academy in the Earth Kingdom, Toph's students are distracted by a crowd gathering at the city gates far below them. They are shocked as she stamps her feet behind them, sending them into the air with a blast of earth. Facing towards the city, she is surprised to notice the crowd. But above her, she hears Appa's roar, and as she orders her students to continue to train, she runs outside and launches herself up into the air, and with a slight whomp, she lands on the back of Appa. Hey guys! She smiles. Sokka and Katara move to their friend, everyone smiling at the reunion, and after they catch up, Katara tells Toph that she is happy that she's here. Aang needs all the support he can get right now, she tells her. Hey, where is Twinkle Toes anyway? Toph asks. Katara shows Toph where Aang is meditating, telling her how Zuko withdrew his support from the restoration movement. He's holed himself up in Yu Dao with a bunch of his soldiers. He won't let anyone in or out. That's where we're heading, Sokka tells her. They all look at Aang, with Katara telling them that he is meditating because of what he might have to do, because of the promise he made. In the astral plane, Aang sits before the spirit of Avatar Roku. You've done your duty. The war is over. And yet, the world still isn't at peace. I'm sorry, Aang. You are still dealing with the consequences of my actions. Roku tells him. Aang sighs, telling Roku that he should never have made his promise to Zuko. I mean, I didn't even kill Ozai, and he was evil all the way through. How am I supposed to kill my own firebending teacher? My friend? Aang asks. But Roku tells Aang that Zuko was in his clearest moment when he asked Aang to make the promise. He knew what was at stake, Roku explains. The past avatar closes his eyes, telling Aang that he wishes he had ended Fire Lord Sozin all those years ago, saving the thousands who have died during the war. When you are in a position of power, you must put the needs of your people above your own. Zuko, at one time, understood this, Roku says. Aang nods, promising to go to Yu Dao and talk to Zuko first. Roku nods, telling Aang to heed his wisdom and be decisive. Appa lands at the gates of Yu Dao, and the group discovers a large crowd of protesters standing by, chanting for the Fire Nation to leave the Earth Kingdom. The group cheers as Aang approaches, with their leader Smellerby stepping forward. Aang! We were hoping you would come! So what's the plan of attack? The Freedom Fighters are at your service!" she tells them. But Aang surprises them when he tells them that he just wants to talk to Zuko first. The Freedom Fighters offer to break open a new gate, allowing Aang to get past the Fire Nation soldiers, but he smiles and waves them off. That won't be necessary. We'll find a way in. He tells them as he pulls out his glider, looking at Katara. The two leap into the air, flying over the gate with ease. Aang and Katara land in the Yu Dao courtyard, bringing the attention of the Fire Nation soldiers. flamey -o, Hotman! Aang greets them, bowing. This city is under the protection of the Fire Lord himself. No one may enter without his express permission, not even the Avatar. Leave now! the captain of the guard orders as he steps forward. Please, I would like to talk to Lord Zuko. That is all, Aang tells the captain, still bowing. The captain launches into a series of attacks, which Aang easily avoids. Finally, he taps one foot against the ground, causing the earth to push up at the captain's feet, throwing him to the ground. I don't want to fight, Aang warns, stepping into a combat pose. The other soldiers look on hesitantly. What are you fools waiting for? Attack! The captain yells. The soldiers launch fire at Aang, causing him to leap and dodge around him. Aang! Katara shouts in fear. 
Don't worry, sweetie, I can handle them. Just give me a sec. He tells her with a smile on his face as he dodges another flaming attack. Aang continues to duck and leap over the soldier's attack, flipping over their heads to receive only a single burn on his robes. Katara tries to warn him, but Aang isn't listening. Oh, for crying out loud, she sighs, opening her flask and bending the water to put out the flames. She reaches out, taking control of the water in a nearby fountain. She bends it around, knocking the soldiers away and freezing them in place. Quit trying to set my boyfriend on fire, she yells as she bends the water. Moments later, all of the guards are either knocked out or stuck to the walls by ice. Whoa, Aang says with a smile. Katara moves to her boyfriend, but another soldier leaps to attack while the two are distracted. Katara finally gets angry, using her bending to create ice spikes that lash out at the soldier. But Zuko's hand suddenly grabs her wrist. Katara, stop! He orders her. She struggles briefly. Let go, Zuko! You're hurting me! Don't make me hurt you back, she tells him. I'm hurting you? What are you doing to my soldiers? My people? He asks her. Aang steps forward, anger in his voice. Let her go, Zuko! She said you're hurting her. He orders his friend. Zuko continues to hold Katara's wrist, telling them that she must first agree to stop attacking his soldiers. Your soldiers attacked her first. Let her go, Aang yells back. I am the Fire Lord. I have the right to protect my citizens, Zuko tells them both. Aang takes a deep breath, blowing the air out and bending it to be a large gust, throwing Zuko away. The Fire Lord quickly gets to his feet, launching fireballs that Aang blocks with water. Aang tries to explain that he just came to talk, to figure out why Zuko has forgotten what they fought for. His eyes begin to glow as he loses control though. Maybe Avatar Roku was right. Maybe a promise is a promise, Aang shouts angrily. The air begins to whip around them as Aang begins to hover into the air. But Katara is there trying to calm Aang and tell him that he won't be able to control himself in the Avatar state while so emotionally charged. She reaches out, putting her hands on his face. You have to calm down, please, sweetie, for me, she asks. Aang falls, coming back to his senses. He knows he almost did something that he would have regretted. Katara's right. We both need to calm down. We need to talk, Zuko tells his friends. Aang looks at the Fire Lord for a moment. That's what I wanted to do in the first place, he shouts. Moments later, Zuko is leading them throughout the city of Yudao. He explains that this is the oldest Fire Nation colony in the Earth Kingdom, that many of the families that live here immigrated 100 years ago. He leads them through the city, showing them the areas where the Fire Nation and Earth Kingdom people mix. But Katara points out how it doesn't seem like the two people are on equal terms as they pass an Earth Kingdom citizen polishing the boots of a Fire Nation citizen. It's not perfect, Katara, but all of the city's people, including the Earth Kingdom people, are better off now than they were a hundred years ago, he tells her. But Aang tells him that if he doesn't move the colony, then Zuko could start another war. Zuko tells them about his incident with the Yudao Mare how he had told his soldiers to seize the man for his words. Suddenly, a large boulder sprouted from the earth between them, and Zuko turned to see the mayor's wife, an earthbender. Fire Lord, please, forgive my husband's foolishness. I've told him time and again to control his tongue, but he never does, the woman explains. Zuko is shocked to discover the mayor's wife is an earthbender and she explains that so is their daughter as she frees her with a sharpened spike of earth. I may be an earthbender, but through my father's bloodline, I am a Fire Nation citizen. My father taught me to always be loyal to my people, something you obviously never learned from your father, the young girl tells the Fire Lord as she retrieves her weapon. The mayor's wife bows, asking the Fire Lord to stay in the city for a few days so they may show him their way of life. Zuko continues to lead Aang and Katara through the city, explaining that he was shown what his people had built in the city, and what would be destroyed if they were forced to leave. Ever since my coronation, I've had trouble finding peace. 
Now, I think I've finally figured out why. I'd forgotten my people, Zuko tells them. Finally, Zuko turns to Aang, explaining that he won't allow them to take the lives that his people have been building for the last hundred years. Harmony requires four separate nations to balance each other out. You can't have balance if one nation occupies another, Aang yells back. Katara looks back, seeing the mayor and his family, a mixture of the Fire Nation and Earth Kingdom. Maybe Yu Dao could be the exception, she whispers. Aang is surprised, but Zuko agrees that the older colonies should all be an exception. Well, regardless, the Earth King needs to be a part of whatever's next. If Aang and I can arrange a meeting, will you be there, Zuko? Katara asks. Zuko agrees. Outside, the crowd wonders what is taking Aang so long. They begin to get angry, preparing to storm the gates. Sokka steps forward, trying to calm them, but Arak sails out and cracks him in the head. That's it, Toph huffs. She stamps her feet, rising up on a patch of earth. Don't you dunderheads know who I am? I'm Toph Bay Fong, the greatest earthbender of all time. When my friend tells you to calm down, you calm down. Next person to throw anything or say anything gets a boulder to the noggin. Get it? She yells. The crowd backs away in fear, quickly calming. Finally, Aang and Katara return, explaining quickly what happened in the city. They tell Toph and Sokka, as well as the protesters, that they are going to meet with the Earth King and decide the next step. Smellerby nods, telling Aang that she can give them four days. After that, the Freedom Fighters will figure out a solution on our own, she warns. The group quickly board Appa, flying off for the Earth Kingdom capital. Meanwhile, Zuko returns to the Fire Nation Royal Palace, quietly walking through the halls. So the Fire Lord has returned, May tells him, stepping out from the shadows. He tells her what happened, and May is upset that Zuko left without telling her. If you're having problems, you're supposed to tell me. I'm your girlfriend, she tells him. She knows that he has been having trouble sleeping, and knows that his bodyguards are idiots. She leads him into the next room, telling him that she asked some friends to come help. In the next room, the Kyoshi warriors stand ready. That night, Zuko once again awakens, feeling something in the palace. He steps outside the room, asking the warriors if they've seen anything. But they inform him that the night is quiet. Go back to sleep. You have to at least try, Suki tells him, but he tells them that he is going to get a drink of water instead. Do you want someone to escort you? Suki asks. But Zuko waves them off. I'll be fine. The walk will do me good, he tells them. Zuko walks through the palace grounds, a pot of tea in his hands. He finally arrives at the prison, pulling open the door to his father's cell. He begins to pour the tea. I need your advice, father. Zuko says, bowing his head. In the shadows, Ozai smiles. And that is Avatar The Promise. If you guys enjoyed this reading, please be sure to give the video a like and leave a comment down below about how you would love to hear the rest of the Avatar comics. And if you want to support us, you can join us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash comicstorian, where you get access to our early access content, podcasts, and other great stuff. And if you enjoyed me, Dan, your reader today, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash silu91, that's C-Y-L-O-O-9-1, or on Twitter and Instagram at Dan T. Producer. Thank you guys so much for listening today. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.